I know I can speak for myself that sometimes I take for granted the health codes that restaurants have to abide by to stay in business. I'm not going to pretend that I haven't been to restaurants that were my favorite, despite knowing that the health inspector may have given it a less than stellar review in the past. But think about it. We can freely go grab something to eat and not be concerned about there not being dead people in the cooler or some weird fungus growing in the ovens. We have health codes that protect us from that. The cooking oil market is worth billions worldwide, and that's a f ton of money. It's estimated that it, by 2024, it's going to be worth a hell of a lot more billions. In China, 98% of their dishes use oil. It's actually really rare to have a baking oven in China. Stove, yes. Oven, no. You can understand that this growing market, street vendors have a bit of trouble keeping up with the demand and price of cooking oil. It's okay. They had a plan. An illegal one, but a plan nonetheless. The first time anyone was documented using or distributing gutter oil in mainland China was in 2000, when a street vendor was selling oil that he sucked out of a restaurant garbage disposal. Before that, in 1985, in Taiwan, there were 22 people that had been arrested, one of them for seven years. They said he had gotten seven years for being the worst offender, but how can you be the worst offender when it's all absolutely just awful? Since its inception, it's grown to be used in about 10% of all cooking in Chinese restaurants. Heavily sold on the black market, restaurants will buy drums of the recycled oil at a steal of a price. Despite this, it's still a million dollar market. Men on duty would go through trash bins, gutters, sewers, and even the solid waste of slaughterhouses to scoop out the liquid and the remaining animal parts. I'm sure they boil it to crazy temperatures to burn off all the fecal bacteria or whatever else kind of Ebola is in it, but the oil is also known to have crazy cancer-causing chemicals in them as well as heavy metals and strong carcinogens like flavicol. Long-term eating of gutter oil has been linked with all sorts of other things, including death. The gutter oil itself is not distinguishable from regular cooking oil or the real cooking oil. Bleach is often used to take the gross coloring of the cooking oil and turn it from a poop color to a golden oil color. They also put other things in it to maintain the pH between whatever is used as the ingredients. The process itself has been compared to making meth. And then it's sold to restaurants at $1,500 a ton. Recently, the government has been trying to crack down on the illegal black market oil trade with harsher punishments. One of the masterminds behind a gutter oil scheme was sentenced to a suspended death sentence, which is basically, you won't be put to death if you don't commit another crime. This punishment wasn't enough for most people, and people feel that criminals involved in food safety issues should be sentenced to death and immediately executed, which I personally feel, because if you mess with my food, it's, I just, you just don't be messing with people's food. That's all I'm saying. Another gutter oil money-making scheme came from two brothers who sold it to over 17 dealers. From there, they spread it up to 100 companies until one of the men was arrested for using inedible animal fat, along with chicken feathers and faux fur and other unusual substances to just bulk out the cooking oil. The crackdown nationwide has helped and it's thought that the gutter oil trade has been slowly getting smaller but there's still no nationwide standard on what constitutes as safe cooking oil. I think of all the travel vloggers that I've seen in China just munching away on street food, and it just, it just kind of makes me want to die, if you think about it. And I'm pretty sure you won't watch another travel vlogger in China eating street food and not think about that. But if you like this video at all, editing, subject, whatever, be sure to give me a like or a sub. It lets me know how to entertain you people. And if you want to support my tiny channel, please consider becoming a member or giving me a thanks. All proceeds will go directly back to this channel. Anyway, I'm Crystal. This is Getting Spooky, and I'm out.